reluctant hero. Yeah, reluctant hero. You know, he was just kind of there. He kind of gets thrown into it. You know, uh, and he happens to be. <laughs> and he happens to be a crystal bearer. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mark. Uh, what would you say is the most difficult uh, aspect of the audition process? Um, not getting nervous. So you yeah. Don't get the job. Uh, you know, I didn't get as nervous as I used to, which is good. Um, sometimes what's hard, especially about anime and video game auditions, is they, a lot of times they don't tell you what you're going to audition for. Because they want to keep it a secret, you know? You know how they're very secretive about the ass that they do? Keep it on the down Yeah. Sometimes you get to know, but a lot of times you don't. Um, and you'll show up and then they'll have some character descriptions. Uh, sometimes they already have in mind what they want you to audition for. Other times they let you pick. You know, so of course I'm picking them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's kind of fun where um, you can at least sometimes bring your own uh, take, you know, to a character. Um, I know for like one, I did a uh, the, well, the Zoids Genesis is sort of one where I got to kind of choose what you'd be like, and. I, when I read about him, he's kind of very uh, zenish. You know, he does. He's a warrior, but he doesn't fight anymore. He trains. That's about it. And um, when I read his, his bio, saw his character, just sort of what kind of came to me was like, oh, it's kind of like um, the old TV show Kung Fu. You know, David Carradine and Kung Fu. You know, just very at peace. And so when I went into the audition, that's sort of how I, I played it, and I ended up getting the part. Uh, I did the same thing with a show called Pretty Cure. Uh, well, this is the thing. We did the pilot, but then it, they, it never got picked up. And then years and years later, they did it recently. I'm thinking it was done in New York. I think or Canada. Yeah, I think it was yeah, New York. Canada, yeah. But for this, um, the character was the guardian of the Prism Stones. And did you see it in the Canadian version? Or the English version? Yeah. Do you have you know the guardian, the, the little guy who was next to that puffy? Yeah. Do you remember how he sounded? No, sorry. Okay. Well, good because then he was unmemorable. <laughs> <laughs> because I should have done that. No. Because <laughs> I got the part. But this is how I did it. Okay. When I saw the description, you know, they had this little guy in the description, and I, I was like, I was doing a lot of young voices, so I said, I want to do something so different. So that will let me do different things. And so I'm just gonna take a chance. And, because again, I, I kind of went back to a reference. I said, oh, he reminds me of Dr. Smith from the old uh, Lost in Space, because he's all nervous, <laughs> and, and a C-3PO from Star Wars. <laughs> so I, I said, okay, I'm gonna bring it together. And when I go in, that's how I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And so um, I, I did the voice and everything, and I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's, it's out there, you know. And, but then I ended up getting the pilot, so we, we did the pilot like the voice, and the voice was something like, uh, he would say things like, uh, Oh no! It's the Prism Stones! <laughs> <laughs> so he was always nervous, and like, Oh, you're coming! What are we going to do? <laughs> are you still leaving? Get off me! You know, so it's like kind of stuff like that, you know? And, um, and of course then I realized once I got the part, Oh my gosh, I have to do this for two hours. <laughs> But it was so it was fun. It was fun, and I, I wish I could have done the full thing because that would have been just you know a lot of fun to have that sort of different kind of character on my resume. You know? so. Are you still there? I'm sorry. Well, I do put the pilot. Oh. That I did the pilot. Yeah. Since it's from the same creators, do you know, have you seen or do you want to see Bakuno? I do want to see Bakuno, but I haven't seen it yet. Watch it. I know. I hear it's wonderful. I've only seen the two characters that you know. Do la 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 la. Have you seen any of it yet? Isaac okay, do la 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 la. I've only seen the two characters that come, you know, in that one scene. Isaac and Maria. Yeah, yeah, the cameo. Okay, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, just, if you haven't always been just voice acting, like you did other kind of mm -hmm. acting on the stage. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, for me, wanting to be an actor meant doing everything. You know, whatever, whatever would come my way, I would want to audition for. And um, I just never thought the opportunity would happen. 
for me because you know it's really hard to break into certain things in, in LA. And um, even though I'm doing anime and video games, it's still hard for me to break into other kinds of you know voiceover, like the Pixar stuff. And, you know, and you know there's all these like kind of just groupings, I guess. Um, but when, you know when I first did I tell you how I got started? No. Um, and this is how weird things are and what we can lead to things. Now, I'm going to give good advice. <laughs> you know what I tell people? Because when I first started acting, you know, when I was, when I was younger, you know, you're hungry. You want to work. You want to do everything. You want it. You want, like, it, it to happen. Whatever it is. You know, because you, we see, like, fame or all that stuff. And like, oh, if I just make it, if I get, like, that one role, then I'll just keep working. You know? And for most of us, it doesn't work that way. You know, and I was, it's, for me, I've learned it's really just a journey, and you show up. You just need to show up and do your best. Don't criticize yourself. You know, if you feel like you haven't done great on one audition, let it go. You know, the next one, just be ready for that one. You know, because the past is the past. And I can't, I don't know what the future's going to hold. You know, like where I've done work years ago, and then someone remembered me, and then I got a job in the future. You know what I mean? So I just say, you just keep at it, keep working, you know, keep developing your craft. Um, and how I got into anime is actually, years ago, I did an industrial film for the state of Arizona. And it was about pyramid scams. You know those pyramid schemes, right? So my father, because I was playing with this kid, I was much younger, and um, he had gotten into this pyramid scam, you know, and was, um, but it's against the law in Arizona. A lot of people didn't know that, I guess. And there was a woman who played my mother, and she worked at Bunny Burger. And she, she kind of cosplayed, because she had a little tail and bunny ears, which kind of fun in this video. So we did this thing for Arizona, okay? Done, you know, I did my job. It was great, got paid, you know. Um, years later, after that, I run into her, the lady who played my mother. And it just so happened that her husband is uh, Steve Kramer, who directs and also voice acts in anime at Bang Zoom. And uh, also Studio Office. I met Steve Kramer. Yeah. Nice guy. Yeah. And um, so she was like, oh, my husband, um, he directs anime at Bang Zoom. And um, she, uh, she said, they're, they're looking for this new young voice. Uh, you should audition. You should audition. And I'm like, well, how am I going to audition? And she said, I'm going to get Steve to get an audition for you. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. You know? And then I kind of let it go because, you know, sometimes people say things and you don't really know what's going to happen. So I, I always take things with a grain of salt until it happens. And uh, so I got a call from Melora and she said, oh yeah, they're going to see you, they want to see you. And I said, oh great, you know. And so basically I went to my first audition. I'd never done, done it before and they knew, you know, I was a newbie. And um, I just decided I was going to have fun because um, I, I was like, they are not going to hire me. They're not gonna hire me. I'm new. They don't know my. They don't know what I can do. You know, I, I have no technique with it. So I just went in and had fun with the character. They kind of explained how it worked. You know, the beeps and stuff. And you know, I was nervous, of course, about some of it. But then I just said, I'm gonna have a good time. And then I let it go. And then a few. Then a, a month later, they called me and they asked me to do a small part in Captain Perlock. So I did a small part in that. I think they wanted to see how I, how I would do. You know, in the work. And then they gave me Stelvia, and I had a little small part in that. And then uh, several months later, I got a call from Mommy. Mommy is not my mommy. <laughs> it's Mommy Okada, and she runs the studios over at Bangladesh, she's like the manager. And, sorry? Yeah, cast, but she's also kind of manages the whole thing now. She's really, yeah. But back then, you know, you would get a call, like, Hello, Dada, it's Mommy calling. Go, <laughs> oh, hi, Mommy. You know, you're in the store, right? <laughs> you're like, it's Mommy. And uh, she was like, congratulations, you got the role in Over My King Gator. And I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was shocked. And they were like, we know you. <laughs> <laughs> shocked, I tell you. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you don't know, um, you know, I, they knew I was a beginner, so it, I got the best of both worlds where I got to do the job and I got to learn on the job. You know, and Tony Oliver was my director, and he does a lot of voice actor classes. So it was great, yeah. yeah. So it was great being able to, um, you know, be with him and have.
have, you know, to have that patience with me. And then I would say, I mean, I, it just helped being able to be in the studio day after day after day, you know. And so that's sort of how I got my training in that. But again, that's what I mean about you never know what's going to lead to the next thing, especially now. Um, how do you figure out how a character is supposed to sound in your head? And they go to outer space in the end. <laughs> So, how do you figure out how a character is supposed to sound? And are you allowed to ad lib a little bit in your voice acting? I mean, you can a little bit. It just depends who you're working with and, it, and what studio you're working with. And also, sometimes the producers from like Viz Media or Anaplex, or you know, if they're there, you know, they they wanted us. They know how they want it. So you have to kind of go the way they want it. You know, I mean, every now and then, like you can come up with a line. Like if a line isn't working, you know, too short, too long, or just doesn't sound right. Sometimes you can, you know, I've done it. You know, how about this? Because you know, sometimes we know because we're we're doing it. You know, we know how it's going to kind of flow sometimes. So sometimes they'll take our suggestions. You know, with that. Um, and, and again, it just depends on on who you're working with. Some you have more leeway than others. But you know, it, right, and I'll tell you some more thing. Um, I was gonna just ask, like, have you ever wanted a role in something but didn't get it? Yeah. <laughs> like, what was one of the shows you really want to get? Yeah. But didn't. didn't. Well, I wanted to get in Monster. Um, yeah, I wanted to get. It. I didn't get it. <laughs> it was um, Steve Kramer. No, no, it was. Uh, <laughs> it was. Uh, oh, John Klein, I think. I think it was New Generation. Yeah, but I didn't get that one. Oh well. Uh, but I mean, there's tons of things. Like when I see certain anime that's you know in Japan, but it hasn't come over here yet, I just oh that would be cool to get in or stuff like that. Um, of course, I would love to have been in stuff that was done even before I got the anime. I wish I could do like a time warp or something. <laughs> you know, be in some things like Full Metal Alchemist or you know, I mean, some of those iconic. Things. <laughs> you know. So. Uh, oh, you know what I was gonna say. Um, what was I gonna say? What was the question you asked me? How do you figure out how a character sounds? Oh right. Uh, and then after that, I was gonna also say I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't remember. It's still, anyone who has it asked, and then I'll ask them. Like, yes. So this is like the most important thing is you know knowing the right people. How do you get your name out there? Yeah. Well, I, I, again, you know, unfortunately, it's not like if you if you like most things where you like study and. You're like, okay, I've done this, and then you go apply or something, you know? You can send in your resume. I mean, I guess maybe that's... But the acting is just so different. It's so different because if you, there's so many different ways. You, there's not like one way, like, oh, if you just do this, then this will happen. You can't, there's no A, B, C, D. Sometimes it's A, and then you find yourself at Q. You know, <laughs> you, you never know how it's going to all come together. You know, I mean, of course, definitely there are things you can do in terms of like acting training, voice training. Uh, if you get a demo, are we done? What's the yellow mean? Like, you know, like that? Okay. Oh, it's like caution. Oh, that's so smart. It's like caution. And then we get like a red stop. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, what stop? You come and drag me off. <laughs> Let's see. What you? Oh yeah. Um, but you know, again, it's like I said. It's it's to me. It's like if you just show up, you never know how it's all going to come together. Because I know a lot of people want to be voice actors, you know. And you know, there's even friends of mine that were that are uh, you know legitimate actors doing things. And I try to even like set up sometimes them. I said, well, I know somebody. I think they might be good. Like I, I had like three or three or four friends that. I, I got auditions for certain voice acting things, but they never, after that, they never even got anything. And, and they're professional, you know, actors, they make a living being, you know, in acting, but for whatever reason, it just didn't work for them with the voiceover. And I don't know why. Um, Is there a voice actor that you want to work with that you haven't worked with yet? 
Well, you know, I think a lot of the famous ones I've already, you know, we've already done so many shows together. You know, even though I don't, I haven't necessarily met them. You know, uh, I never met um, Kari Savage. I would like to meet her. She was selfie and, and do da da da. So it was kind of cool. Like, okay, finally. Yeah. What did I say? Yeah, I was, I was crossing over like Kari Savage. <laughs> You know, Kari, but yeah, uh, Kari Savage I've worked with in yet, but Kari Walgren I haven't yet. So, you know, it'd be kind of cool just to meet her, you know, and, um, you know, like I said, it's always interesting when you finally get to meet people who you've, like, worked with, you know, that's been your girlfriend, <laughs> you know, or been your brother, or been your mother, or been, your, you know, been the one you blew up, or, <laughs> you know, and, so, yeah. anyone else? I had gotten sick, so I had lost my voice too. 
but I had five minutes. But in the session, somehow, I was I actually made it through. And I, I, they couldn't believe, because they had to reschedule me once before. And they couldn't believe I actually made it through that, so I couldn't even there. Anyone, anyone else? Yes. So, we were talking about, <coughs> so we were talking about the audition process. Yeah. And uh, for me, I've been an actor for about six years. Yeah. So, I was wondering, could you take us exactly a breakdown of how you went through the audition process? Wait, say, say that the last part you mean? Like, uh, for example, if you had to bring anything to the audition process, bringing, uh, whether it's a headshot, whether it's a sample, I mean, all the tools would be Right. Bring. Well, with regular acting auditions, you bring your resume and headshot. Am I done, done? No. Um, okay. Okay. Um, you make me nervous. <laughs> Well, you know, like with acting, acting, like I always have to bring a headshot, because I also do film and TV stuff. Um, the headshot with that, your resume, but you don't list your voice. Sorry, um, I mean, sorry, wrong oh, okay. Uh, you, you don't do that, but you bring, um, you know, if you go to the SAG website, or it might be SAG or Equity, they, they have a sort of a standard um, uh, resume that's being more accepted, that's professional. So if you go to those websites, they might have that listed of how actors are supposed to do it. Now with voice, they just want you to show up. They usually don't even want a picture. They don't want a resume. Because um, they've already called you in for your voice. So they're not really concerned about what else, whatever else you've been you've done. The demo is good for introducing yourself so you can get the audition. But usually when I run it for voice, I don't, I don't even, I used to bring my picture, I used to bring my voice resume, but they didn't even want it. So. But you got it. Thank you guys, they're kicking me out. Yeah, yeah I, really, I really appreciate you guys coming to the panel because, um, I mean, if it's not, you know, otherwise I just keep talking to myself. <laughs> but no, I enjoy each and every one of you that come because, um, I mean, it means a lot to any of us voice actors. I know it does to me to meet you guys and talk. Um, I'm having a vo uh, autograph time. If you guys want to come to that later. Three. Three. And then uh, I have a, another panel that I'm specifically going to talk about voice acting itself. And then uh, which I know I've done a lot of. But definitely come to the new Rara Rock panel if you can. Yeah. It's yeah. Fun. yeah. Um, it's really, it's really cool. Have fun. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.